Welcome to the Demystify Technology Podcast from the Reform Group. Typically, you, you go through the due diligence process. What's the world of private equity? <laughs> right. Can't wait. Demystify it. We're back again, Jim. Happy to be here. Wonderful. What are we talking about today? We have had quite a few calls as of late from our many friends and relations around recruitment for technology positions, primarily uh, senior level technology positions. And it, it seems most prevalent among the founder-led organizations who've, who have just taken that next step into private equity investment and the, the organizations looking to scale out. Now they find themselves, you know, they, they didn't really have the appetite or the resources to invest in a dedicated CTO type of resource. And as they started seeing the, uh, the need to scale out and, and they have the resources to now invest in those type, that type of talent, they, they really don't know how to go about recruiting for that position or what they need in that role. So why do they need a CTO? Well, what's, what's wrong with the, the person that's already doing the work yeah, for them? There's, and so we go on a record as saying there's nothing wrong with the person doing the work for them, right? At the time, um, it, you know, when you start up a business, you're, you walk in there and you, you have an idea, you have a vision for what the product is, and then you think, okay, where do I need to prioritize my resource allocation? And then you think, okay, I need, you know, if you're building out a, a web experience, you can say, I need somebody who has the technology experience and is able to build a front-end web experience, and maybe I'll leverage a WordPress or something of that nature to make this product function day one. And then that evolves over time, and you start taking more and more ownership for all of that. As the need dictates, they put the resources in place that are suitable for that moment in time. Quite often when we work with these 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 organizations, these founder-led organizations, we're finding that the resource they had in place was exactly what they needed at the time. Quite often doesn't have the expertise or the broad base of technical experience and knowledge and understanding to question what do they need for the next iteration of the organization, right? As you start to build out the infrastructure to go from supporting 100 clients to 1,000 clients, what needs to change? What's, what's different about that? And that type of resource typically has a much broader base experience. They may tend more towards a full stack developer than the person that's in the role now. So it's, it's not that the person that's there is wrong, that the person that they need now, that, that the company has evolved and that person has not been able to because they've been so busy keeping the single. Okay, day so that, that, that's a fair point then. So if, if I'm a CEO and I've, I've relied on, on, on my team that I've probably handcrafted over the years, how do I know that that team is not quite what I need there? What's, what things am I looking for there that would tell me that I probably need a seasoned CTO? And let, let's use the word CTO as, as a holding title for the moment because CTO means a lot to different people, right. but let, let's, let's right. use it for a holding title. What's my, what's my flags to say that, that this team may need a bit more leadership or relax in the area that I need them to go in? Right. So some of the things that we typically see either through due diligence or when we start working with organizations to, to recruit for the role in the scenario where they're ready to, to really take the next step in technology leadership the organization finds itself and the development team finds itself being much more reactive than proactive. They're not really coming up with the vision for that road that technology roadmap that you would expect for a from a senior level person. Yeah, I, I always said that uh, my litmus test to know if you're a true CTO versus a, a VP of engineering or, or just a senior developer or senior lead was if I could ask you for your future roadmap and you could give me a PDF or a presentation or even a document to say, this is where I'm going there and then, then you had the leadership skills. If you did not have that, or you looked at me with that sort of dog curiosity <laughs> look about you, you're thinking, okay, you're not the chap or chap S that I need in order to take this organization forward. Chap S, the feminine form of chap. Yes. Got it. I didn't say, I, I say we're, we're, we're an equal opportunity CTO. <laughs> Uh, organization here. So that was the fundamental difference in terms of that is it and I think you you said that which is they lack the leadership to take that next evolutionary step by themselves. Maybe sometimes they don't utilize the best industry standards or even know what the best industry standards are. I know that you've had a lot of experience stepping in 
to and working directly with the CEO to help define that CTO role and what they need in that next person. What, how do you go about helping them understand and assess what truly are the needs for that organization as they decide to make that investment in that type of person? Most of the time, people aren't realizing that the true value valuable asset is the team around them. So they're not actually spending enough time mentoring, growing that team below them. So anybody that that's claims they're a CTO or director of software, the, the titles seem to be free and easy when it comes to, to the, uh, that level of company. Uh, but most of the time, they're really not living up to what the title should be giving. And most of the time, they think that it's all about the technology, it's all about the platform, it's all about the enterprise. We're an actual fact. Most of the time, a good CTO or a good VP of engineering is not actually cutting code themselves. They're not actually down in the trenches themselves. They're there making sure that their team is as productive as possible. Their team is staffed up in the technologies that the company has put their weight behind. And in some instances, the CTO, or especially the incoming CTO, doesn't usually have that much choice with respect to changing the technology stack. They'll be able to move the oil tanker slowly over a period of time, but these right. are well-established companies. These are not startups that we're saying, right, right. we're going to build something brand banking new today. What are we doing it in? No, these, these are well-established companies. You, you, you can't just simply say, yeah, we're going to Node today or we're going to Python tomorrow or we're doing this. You've got to be a little bit more strategic in that way. So therefore, you've got to inherit what you've already got and uh, very much mentor and, and grow the team that you've already got and figure out where the weaknesses of the team is. And that is, again, another small litmus test is you, you ask the lead at the moment, say, okay, what's your resourcing plan? They say, well, I never get authorization for recruitment. I said, well, that's, that's a fair comment and usually that's the case, but what if you did? Right. What if somebody right. said, right, we've given you four more head counts tomorrow. Do you know exactly what you want? As opposed to that gut feel, oh God, I'd love to have three more developers. But, but what would those developers actually do? What seniority would you want those developers to be? Would they actually run out of work in six months' time? Right. And, and that's, that's where we need to get a real feel for it. So when, when we look at an organization and, and somebody comes in and asks us to help fill that role, the first stage, of course, is just looking at that, what do we need to do to keep the engines running now? Or keep the lights on, if you <laughs> use whatever metaphor. And, and then figure out what it is is needed from the communication between the engineering team and the CEO and CFO. And I think what we can do in the next podcast actually is, is delve deeper into the requirements that, that a PE portfolio demands from a CTO, because mm -hmm. it's a slightly different set of metrics uh, than, than running for say a startup or running for a well-established company. You've got a, a different set of goals and, and, and strategy to which to go for on that one. but. The, the, the fundamental premise is how well is the current team working at the moment and does the current leadership have a true handle on the current team? Yeah. Now that's, I love the analogy of changing the direction of the oil tanker, right? Because it truly is. That thing has a momentum. That technology platform has momentum. And you, you can't just disrupt the entire business to replace everything. And I think you'll find that most equity firms fully appreciate that fact. But they also want to see the longer term vision and understand what are the pieces you can bite off, what's consumable now versus, you know, two years from now, three years from now. Yeah, and as we always say, the, the one word that PE firms generally don't like to hear is the word rewrite. So <laughs> <laughs> that generally comes with a lot of dollar signs. I don't like to hear that either. No, so, so uh, we'll delve into that in the next podcast. So, Jim, thank you very much, and uh, let's, let's catch you the next time. Absolutely. 